This is Mike from Minimal 3DP. And last week I did a video on the new release of Orca Slicer 2.2. And I want to go ahead and revisit that video and how to do pressure advance because I've had several questions regarding what I did during the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Last week when I looked at the new pressure vents, I have that up on screen here. And one of the things I pointed out, I noticed that the flow rate it's showing down here is about seven. And the flow rate, as far as I can tell, I have that set higher, but I'm gonna sort of ignore that for now. But then I also had the acceleration at 500, which wasn't correct or at least I didn't think it was correct. So I want to show you what I, I realized and some mistakes I made. And also let's rerun the test. So I'm going to start by taking a look at the printer configuration. So let's move over to there. Right now I'm in the printer config. And if I look at this, I have it set the max velocity of 500 and the max acceleration 3,500. I thought, well, I have it set right. So why is the acceleration showing 500? Well, it turns out the problem is over an Orca Slicer. It's not an Orca Slicer problem. It's a I mess something up problem. So let's go switch now. So we need to make sure in your configuration, make sure the velocity and the acceleration are set here. So we want to verify that. And then let's switch over to Orca Slicer. I have Orca Slicer open. I'm going to go to prepare. And then let's look at the printer itself. So I'm looking at the printer. And I'm going to look at the print settings. And one of the things to be aware of is there's acceleration and speed limits set under the printer settings. So these, I believe, were set at 500. So I was overriding what I had in my configuration with what's going on in the slicer. So that's something to be aware of. You need to check all these settings across the board because there's a good chance you could override your, your own settings. You might have it set in the printer config, but just setting in the printer config doesn't necessarily solve your problems. You need to make sure it's set correctly in all the various places. Now, so I have it set correctly here now. And let's go over and let's just take a look at speed under the processes here. Now, if I scroll down in speed, here's another place where I have acceleration. And this one wasn't correct either. So you need to make sure that with your acceleration and your max velocity, you have that set everywhere and it's appropriate. And again, the PA right now is at the 0.02, which I really don't believe is correct. Now I am going to point out this is all under the material settings. So you want to do your flow rates and your pressure advance is going to be a per filament type setting. And you may even want to check this if you're using, I, I sometimes have issues if I'm using PLA, particularly if one, I'm using one with a silk sheen to it. Silk tends to act a little differently. So again, I might want to have a different profile for silk enhanced PLA. So again, this is a filament setting, so under your materials. Now, it appears everything is correct. I'm just going to take a quick look through my settings. And right now, and let's, let's just search for flow and see if that's anywhere under here. So we do have a flow ratio under walls and surfaces. And there is a top surface flow ratio. So there it is right there. But I'm just going to leave all those as is. So I think my settings are all right, and my acceleration is set everywhere I need it. So I'm just going to go to calibration, pressure advance, and then do the PA pattern. And I'm going to leave these numbers as is. And I want to hit slice plate, and as you can see, it is sliced, and it's now showing that 3500, although the flow ratio is still 7.03, so we're just not going to worry about that. But it does have the acceleration correctness. 
Now we need to make one other change, at least I do, I've noticed with this printer. It does not like when I do adaptive bed mesh with this model. So to change that, I'm gonna use the code I'm using for my start code. I can make a real quick change here. I'll just show you that. The way I have it set up is I'm using the code that WorkSlicer recommends for adaptive bed mesh. I'm just gonna scroll down here and uncomment out where it says bed mesh calibrate. And then I'm going to go here where it says bed mesh calibrate. Again, this is for the adaptive bed mesh. And I'm just going to comment this line out. Now, I don't even bother saving this. I'm just doing this for this print. The adaptive bed mesh, at least for me, has been working fine, except for when I do this PA pattern. And I believe it has something to do with just how it's set up. Not too worried about it right now. So let's hit slice plate. And I'm going to send that to my printer. And I'll come back in a couple of minutes and I'll show you how I interpret it and where I update the settings. So the model is finished printing and let's take a look at it and see what we can interpret from this. Put together a close up of the PA pattern here. And hopefully you can see this real well. Now, what we're looking for is we're looking, and let me see if I can get a pointer here. So, what we're looking for is consistency in these lines which I'll be honest, it seems like I have uniform line thickness. And then we're looking for sharp corners. Now, I read somebody put this together. I think it was from Elias's uh, tuning site. He basically recommended don't bother with trying to pull a, a builder square up with these. Just look at it and see what looks best. Now, the other thing we're going to look for is gaps down in here in the lines. And let's zoom in a little bit. And we can see a little bit of gapping down here and in here. Now, to me, it starts to look sharp right in, I think maybe this line, whoops, this line looks to me to be the sharpest. So it looks sharp. I'm not seeing any inconsistencies. And that actually is about 0.03 if I look off to the side here. Zoom out a little bit. So 0.03. So now what I'm saying is the pressure advance for PLA on my printer should be 0.03. So let's switch over to Orca Slicer and get that set. So I'm in Orca Slicer and I'm just going to go to Filament and scroll down here. And here's the pressure advance. I have it enabled. And I'm going to change this to 0.03. So right now I have my pressure advance set for this printer. Now, if I want to really be fiddly, what I can do after saving that is go up here to calibration. Oh, first, let's delete the model from the build plate. So I can go back up here, go to pressure advance, and then change these steps to something instead of 0 0.005, change it to maybe 0 0.001, and run the test again. But this time, do it between maybe zero and let's say five here. And that way I can use this to dial in and get things much more exact. Now, I really don't think it's worth it. For me, I, I think this is fine. Pressure advance is one of those things where there's some other factors that can affect it. And again, it, it, to me, getting this initial value set is fine. So I'm gonna stick with what I have and then have my new, at least for this filament, my new value be 0 0.03. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any more questions or comments, please don't hesitate to let me know. But hopefully this answers some of the questions people had about how I ran the pressure events and how I use it. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments, post below. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description. 
of how you can schedule a 15 minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.